Hey guys, and welcome to the next part in our number theory section of Edexcel's a little further math. So this is further pure maths too. So it's the last pure module. Um, so we're looking at number theory today, and more specifically, Bezu's identity. So this is just following on from where we stopped with the Euclidean algorithm. So this is the next part of the Euclidean algorithm. And sometimes you might see it referred to as the extended Euclidean algorithm. And what Bezu's identity does, or what it allows us to do, is it allows us to find integer values for certain equations. So for example, how do we find integers such that 49x plus 60y is equal to 1? So this is what we're going to answer today. So here's an example question. So we have to use the Euclidean algorithm to find x and y that are integers such that the GCD of 143 and 252 is equal to this expression here, this equation. So for today, just to speed up time, I've worked through the Euclidean algorithms already and they're already on here. Now, if you want more practice with the Euclidean algorithm, do practice them here, guys. So pause the video, see if you can get the same value. Um, but if you're okay with it, then you can just skip along with us. So the first thing to do for any of these questions is always work out the Euclidean algorithm first. So always work out the Euclidean algorithm. So this has been done for us. So as you can see, it's just following the Euclidean algorithm pattern. And we obtain that the GCD is equal to 1. So these two numbers are called prime. Now, what we're saying is that 143x plus 252y is equal to 1. So we've got to find integers coefficients for these x, uh, for the x and for the y. So what we're going to do is we're going to work backwards through the, the Euclidean algorithm, starting with the first non-zero remainder. So we're going to start on this line here. The 7 is equal to 1 times 6 plus 1. So we start with this line here. So this is going to look like just crazy at the minute, but don't worry, we're going to slowly work through it. So what we say is that 1 is equal to 7 minus 6, because remember, this has to be equal to 1, this expression here, the GCD is equal to 1. So we're going to say that 1 is equal to 7 minus 1 times 6, so 6. So that's my first line, and now we're going to keep working backwards. So we look at the next line. Well, we know that 1 is equal to 7 minus 6, but can we express 6 in a different way? Well, yeah, of course. We can say that 6 is equal to 34 minus 4 times 7, like we've done here. So they've said 7 minus 34 minus 4 lots of 7 is equal to 1, which is, which is true, but we just need to keep manipulating at each stage. So now, what they said is the next line is that there's 5 lots of 7 minus 34 is equal to 1. And where they've got this 5 lots of 7 is because they've got 7 minus minus 4 lots of 7. So if you do minus minus 4 times 7, that gives you positive 4 lots of 7. So we've got 4 times 7 and we've got an extra 7, so what we actually have is 5 lots of 7. And we minus the 34 as well. So this will be 35 minus, four, minus 34, which is still 1, so we know we're correct so far. If you were to check your working at any point and it's not equal to what you're working with here, so this is 1, so if this came out as 2, for example, something would have gone wrong with our substitution. So we know we're correct so far. And again, we keep substituting. Now, the pattern is, is that you work from left to right, so for example, so it alternates. So we start with the very first right element like this. So we've substituted here. Now we've got 5 lots of 7. And now we move up to the next line, but we're going to substitute into the 7 here. So we substitute into the 7, and then for the next substitution, we go to this side again, like you can see here. So 7 can be expressed as 109 minus 3 times 34, like they've done here. And what they've done is a bit of simplifying by multiplying through. So you've got 5 times minus 3 lots of 34, so that'd be minus 15 lots, and we've got another minus 34 at the end. So that gives us minus 16 lots of 34. The 5 times 109 is just 5 lots of 109. So never multiply through, always keep it as multiples. So 5 lots of 109 minus 16 lots of 34. And now we're going to substitute for the 34. So remember, we started with, we started with the right, we went to the left, now we're going to the right again. So we're going to substitute for 34. 34 is equal to 143 minus 1 times 109. We substitute that in, and we just do a bit of manipulation again. So we obtain that um, we've got 5 lots of 109 minus 16 times minus 109. So that's going to give us 16 lots plus 5 lots, giving us 21 lots of 109. And we've still got the minus 16 times 143. And then because we did it on the right that time, we go back to the left. So 21 lots of 109. Can we express 109 differently? Yeah, of course we can. We can say that 109 is equal to 252 minus 1 times 143. We keep the minus 16 on the end still. Don't forget this. Uh, if you forget this, your answer will fall apart. 
But all we need to know is simplify. So you know, we know we're finished now because we're on the last line of the Euclidean algorithm. So once you're on the last line, we know we're about to finish the question. So when you simplify all this, what you're going to obtain is that you've got 21 lots of negative 143, so minus 21 lots of 143. We've got another minus 16 lots of it here. So when you simplify that, you're going to get minus 37 lots of 143. And then we've still got 21 times 252. So our integer coefficients is that x is equal to minus 37 and that y is equal to 21. And um, remember, we just deduced that x and y are because it's 143 times x. So what are 143 times by? That's your x value, which is minus 37. And similarly with the y value. So it's quite, it's very easy to make a mistake. It's the first thing I'll say, just a word of one. It's very easy to make a mistake. So just be very careful for that. But let's have a go at another example. So this is a short question. Um, so have a go at this one yourself, guys. It's quite short. Um, work at the Euclidean algorithm first. So I'm going to put that on the screen just so you can see it. But that's Euclidean algorithm. So we'll start from here now. We've got the Euclidean algorithm. All we need to do now is work backwards. So working backwards through this, we start with the first non-zero remainder, which is going to be 1. So we've shown that they're relatively prime or co-prime. So that's just the first part. Now we work backwards. So we've got 11 minus 2 lots of 5. So we're saying that 1 is equal to 11 minus 2 times 5. Then we keep sub, uh, substituting in and simplifying. So we've got 11 minus 2 lots of 49 minus 4 lots of 11. So what we've done is we've substituted 5 in here. So 5 is equal to 49 minus 4 times 11. That's this part here. <coughs> so that's where we've got that. And then we simplify. So what we've got here is minus 2 lots of minus 4 lots of 11. So minus 2 times minus 4 gives us 8. We've got an 11 at the front, so 1 lot of 11 plus 8 lots of 11 gives us 9 lots of 11. So this is the trickiest bit for a lot of students, just figuring out how you simplify here. But once you spot that little trick, that little bit of a pattern, it just it comes naturally. It's quite nice once you've just seen that pattern there. So we substituted in on the right that time, so we're going to substitute in on the left. So we've got 9 lots of 11 minus 2 lots of 49. So we go on to the next line. 11 is equal to 60 minus 49 times 1, so 60 minus 49, like we've got here. Now, we know this question's basically going to finish because we're on the last line of the Euclidean algorithm. So, 90 minus 60, uh, sorry, 9 times 60 minus 49. So, what we're going to do is just simplify here. So, we've got 9 lots of minus 49, and we've got another minus 2 lots here. So, that gives us minus 11 lots of 49 and 9 lots of 60. So, our answer is just minus 11 lots of 49, so x is minus 11, and 9 lots of 60, giving us y is 9. And then finally for part c, notice that the integer coefficients here are the same. So 49p um, and 60q are the same. So the only thing that's changed is this last number here that is equal to 5. Now, this is just a one marker that will come up on your exam if it does come up, and all you've got to do is multiply through what you get to... So how do we go from 1 to 5? Well, we times by 5. So what that means, we times these x and y's by 5 as well. So minus 11 times 5, minus 55. And then 9 times 5, q is 45. So that's just your last line there. So let's have a look at an exam question here. So these questions are usually 5 marks in total. Um, sometimes they'll be given just as a full 5 marker. Sometimes they'll hold your hand a little and give you it as a 3 marker and then a 2 marker. Um, so part A, we have to use the Euclidean algorithm to show that 39 and 16 are relatively prime. So remember, relatively prime means that GCD is equal to 1. So I've done it here, and this is the Euclidean algorithm. So I've already done the video on the Euclidean algorithm, so check that if you want to try how to work that out. So we're just showing it step by step, and we obtain that the remainder above 0 is 1, so therefore they must be relatively prime. So that's not really what we're focusing on today. We're focusing on Bezu's identity. So let's have a go at part B. Be sure to pause it and have a go if you want, guys. Um, but if not, let's work for it together. So what we're going to say is that 1, so we start with the first non-zero remainder, 1 is equal to 7 minus 3 lots of 2, like we've got here. So let's keep going now. We're going to substitute again. So what we're doing is we're substituting in for this 2 here. So 16 minus 7 lots of 2, which is what we've got here. Now we've got to simplify here. So what we've actually got here is minus 3 lots times minus 2 lots. So that's going to give us 6 lots of 7. So what we actually have in total now is 7 lots of 7, which we've got here. So 1 is equal to 7 lots of 7 minus 3 lots of 16. We substitute on the right. So we always substitute on the right at the very first stage, guys. So we substitute on the right. Now we're going to substitute for this 7 here. 
And notice this straight away takes us on to the, la uh, the first line of our Euclidean algorithm. So our question's basically finished here. So we substitute in. We've got 1 is equal to 7 lots of 39 minus 2 lots of 16. So we've said 7 is equal to 39 minus 16 times 2. Now what we're going to do is just simplify. So 7 times minus 2 would be minus 14 lots of 16. And we have minus 3 lots. So if we simplify that, it's going to give us minus 17 lots of 16. And we still have our 7 times 39. So we have 7 times 39 and minus 17 lots of 16. So we're finished. The question is finished. We've got p is 7, because it's the 39 value is p, and then the q value is the 16, which is minus 17. And there we have it, guys. So that's the the chapter done for Bezu's identity. So it's quite, it is very brief. Um, it's just a follow-on from the Euclidean algorithm. Uh, but I didn't want to make the video too long, as it was an introduction. So that's Bezu's identity. If anything is unclear, guys, please do leave a comment below. I have more questions on my channel that I've done for Bezu's identity and just number theory in general. So be sure to check them out if you need more practice. Um, but hopefully that's okay. And there we have it.